Hey guys, welcome back. So today's viewer question is how to run all of the readiness monitors to completion. And when we get out on the road, I'll go over why that's important and why you'd want to do that. But first off, in order to do this drive cycle, I've got to meet eight enabling criteria. And I need to go over that first. So in order to do this, you've got to start with an eight hour cold soak. Uh, the ambient temperature's got to be between 40 degrees and 100 degrees Fahrenheit and below 8,000 feet of elevation. And the fuel tank should be one half to three quarter full. Three quarter is preferable. And we've got to start the engine, idle for 15 seconds, and then we've got to drive at 40 miles per hour until the coolant temperature is 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And in order to do that, I set my cruise control at 42 miles per hour. And the EVAP monitor should run in 12 minutes and 30 seconds if all goes well. And if it doesn't run in 30 minutes, you've got to start this whole thing over and wait another 8 hours. And uh, I talk about uh, running this EVAP monitor, monitor because usually that is the most difficult and hardest monitor to run. All the others usually have no problem running. And the, the tip in the service literature also is to operate the throttle smoothly to minimize fuel slosh. So uh, I've already taken my scan tool and I've cleared the uh, monitors so every single one is incomplete. And let me show that to you now. So it says on there uh, I've got five monitors incomplete. And let me show you what they are. So don't worry about misfire, fuel, and uh, comprehensive. Those are always continuous, so those are always running. So we're worried about the catalyst or the catalytic converter, the EVAP system, the oxygen sensor, the oxygen sensor heater, and the EGR monitor. All right, so let's uh, get this drive cycle underway. So I've got to idle for 15 seconds. So that was about 20 seconds, so that should do it. Okay, so uh, why is this important and why would you need to do this? Well, right off the top of my head, I can think of two reasons. Uh, the first one being is you've just made a repair that involved a check engine light or a, a diagnostic trouble code. And uh, you've completed your repair and then you've cleared the code. And uh, after you would clear the code and made your repair, you want to run the monitor uh, for that affected subsystem to make sure that you actually fixed it because uh, the PCM when it runs the monitor and the self-diagnostic uh, test for that monitor uh, the PCM has the final word if you actually fixed it or not and I'm sure we can all relate where we've uh, fixed a problem or we've taken our car in to fix a problem and um, a few days later or a week later or even up to a month later, uh, the check engine light will come back on and you'll check the code and it's the same exact code. And that's because uh, you never fixed the problem or the mechanic never fixed the problem. And it took uh, a week or a month in order to uh, put enough miles on the car to drive the car uh, to meet all of the enabling criteria to get that monitor to run to completion. 
and um, so if say if you had a misfire you would need to run the uh, or not the misfire say if you had a O2 sensor code and uh, you would need to run the O2 sensor monitor or an EVAP uh, repair and you need to run the EVAP monitor okay so the uh, second reason why you'd want to do this is uh, if uh, your if your home state is doing uh, emission testing which is the majority of the states I think it's uh, 34 out of the 50 states are doing emission testing now uh, when you take your car in uh, for the smog check or whatnot they're gonna need to uh, oh I, I need to um, I need to set this back up. It got shut off when I uh, started the engine. Oh, come on, guy. Okay, we're connected. Okay, so already the engine coolant temperature is up to 154 degrees, so we're almost at that 170 threshold. So uh, back to what I was talking about. Uh, when you get your smog check or your emission testing, uh, they're going to check the uh, the PCM and the OBD2 monitors. And uh, usually you're allowed to pass with one monitor not done. But uh, when I take my car in, I like to make 100% uh, sure that all the monitors are run so that it uh, will uh, decrease any chances of a, a surprise down at the smog inspection office. Okay, now it says my engine coolant temp is 165, so we're almost at that 170, 167. And when I hit that 170, I'll check the monitors to see which ones have run so far. 168. Oh, come on, let's hit that 170 before I hit this stop sign. Okay, 170. Thank goodness. Okay, so it looks like I had three just run just now. And it looks like... Looks like the oxygen sensor, the oxygen sensor heater, and the EGR ran. So we just need the uh, catalytic converter and the EVAP monitor to run now. So let me uh, get my speed at uh, stabilized. So I'm back at 42 miles an hour. And uh, of course, under ideal conditions, you'd want to uh, run this uh, drive cycle on a dyno, but of course I don't have access to a dyno and of course none of you guys ha or most of you guys don't have access to a dyno because the hardest part about running this drive cycle is finding a road that you can do it on safely because you're going to be driving at unusual speeds uh, so you're going to need to pick a time when there's not many cars on the road that are going to interfere with uh, your uh, you're driving at different speeds and of course uh, you kind of want to do this after you make your repairs because uh, if you do it properly 
and uh, meet all this enabling criteria you can get this done in about 15 or 20 minutes versus ha having to drive the car for a few days or a few weeks or even a month and it looks like I got a car coming up on my rear end and he's going to be wondering why I'm only doing 42 miles an hour because this is a 55 mile an hour road and of course uh, when people are going it's three in the clock in the morning right now and uh, people are usually zipping down this road uh, well over the okay look at that you can see his lights maybe you can see his lights in my rearview mirror but he's right on my ass and uh, good thing we're coming up on the uh, freeway just up here in about 15 seconds So uh, when I get on the freeway, I'm going to bump it up to uh, 56 miles per hour. All right, here's the uh, freeway right here. Freeway on-ramp. He's probably happy as a clam now that I'm not in front of him no more. All right, giddy up. 56 miles per hour. Here we go. So we're at uh, 56 miles an hour, uh, intake air temperature is 59, engine coolant temp is 174. Uh, let's see what the uh, monitors say. So I've still got two incomplete. Okay, we're still waiting on the catalyst and the evap. So let's uh, check time. So I've, I've been drive or I've been filming for 13 minutes. So I think I've only been driving for about 11. Hopefully, I can get this to run in the next couple of minutes. And uh, I apologize for all these uh, dead air spaces of no uh, talking because uh, I really don't have anything else prepared to talk about. And um, I just wanted to film this in, in one take to get it on film with no cuts uh, just to show uh, how uh, easy or how difficult it is to run this uh, in one continuous uh, clip. All right, so I'm coming up on my exit. Let's check these monitors. Okay, so it looks like we did it. I've got, z says uh, zero. So it says uh, zero incomplete. Oh, I'm, I apologize for that. I hope uh, Highway Patrol didn't see that. He's probably gonna think I'm drunk. Okay, so I've got uh, good news for you guys. So we're at 14 minutes and I've been uh, filming for 12 minutes. So it looks like I got every single monitor to run uh, within uh, 12 minutes. And I'm gonna pull over here and I'm gonna show you on the uh, scan tool.
Okay, so once again, uh, don't worry about misfire, fuel, or comprehensive. Those are always continuously running. And now you can see my catalyst is complete. My EVAP is complete. And of course the oxygen sensor, the oxygen sensor heater, and the EGR. But I'm telling you, uh, the most important one, or the most difficult one, is that EVAP. And as long as you do, as long as you, uh, so as long as you follow these steps that I was talking about earlier, uh, these eight steps, you'll be able to get all those monitors to run. And of course, I didn't come up with these uh, by myself, out of my hat. I uh, pulled these from the service literature, so uh, they're straight from the uh, manufacturer. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.